Okay, it's happening, apparently. Oh, I don't know, it's their third or fourth day. Hey, do you like the shirt? That's a bit leery, isn't it? I don't care about colour, it was $5, so that'll do me. I'm happy. How are you all going? I'm Steve, this is Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome, it's the live stream. I'm finishing these boxes off. And the only way I decided I'm going to be able to do it properly is if I've got a group of people like your good selves in there watching. And I've just lost my chat. There we go. Now, <laughs> now I've lost the other one. Oh, for goodness sake. It's all happening here. Chad, good morning. First inmate, how you going? Oh, I had an accident there, but I'll tell you all about that later on. Okay. Uh, boxes, boxes, boxes. Still working on these. Nearly finished today will be the last day. Oh, I'm really, I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping, Chad. G'day, Jared. How are you, mate? Lovely to pop in. Thank you for the company. Oh, dear. What on? Oh, I, I'm so looking forward to tidying my shed up. You would not believe. I had an accident this morning, which I will explain later on. We got some more people there. Um, <laughs> and I'm suffering the consequences today. But it's all good. I'm just cleaning an area here. As you can tell, I really haven't had time to clean my bench up very much in the last three or four days because it's been full on. And then when I finish here, Oh, people are coming everywhere. G'day, Ken from Ohio. Welcome from Steve in Brisbane, mate. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, Andy, good morning. Daniel, good morning. There you go. Yeah, everyone's, oh, I'm not going to do what I did before. But I'm quite enjoying this. I'll tell you what I am enjoying, um, apart from your good company, is the fact that I just stream... When I'm ready to stream, I don't give anyone a time. Therefore, I'm not under that extra pressure. You have to be doing something at a certain time. I, I have been down here for the last nearly three hours working, um, just doing refinements and what have you. And now I'm at the stage. Where's me? I had a U-Butte rebate plane here. Look at this. I'm going to use it now. It's a... Um, 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 where are we? It's a Veritas rebate plane. I got, I got the wrong side. I need the other side one, which I haven't even taken out of the box yet. There we go. We're doing unboxing. Oh, dear. I like reading instruction manuals. I'll give that a miss. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, these, um, they're a pair. They come in a, well, I'm, you're looking at that and I'm looking at that and you can't see it. There you go. They come in a right and a heft. Um, that's the right-handed one. Okay, and that's going to be the left-handed one. So being left-handed, I use the left-handed one, but I've never taken the right-handed one out of the box. So I'll do it now. Oh, makes me laugh. They say caution, sharp blade, and it's not sharp at all. Uh, it's too early in the day. I just threw the blade in the bin. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, goodness gracious me. Now, oh, there it is. I thought I'd lost the blade. Is it sharp? No, it's not. All right, well, I'll sharpen it first because I want to use it. Um, ba -do -boom -boom. I, I've spoken the last couple of days about I've switched over on the Tormic to diamond wheels. And I've got to tell you, I'm a fan. But I will also tell you, I wasn't a fan when they first came out. I just, nah, a bit of dyed in the wool traditionalist, I think, don't like it. Um, and Theo had one fitted to his... Um, T8, and I went over to um, sharpen some thickness of blades, and I was not impressed. 
but I've since tried them out again. Maybe it was my mood, I don't know. I've tried them out again, and yeah, they, they're absolutely lovely. The thing I like, the wrong one, the thing I love about them is, we'll spin this around here, the fact they never go out of square. Is that a good shot? Here you go. Yeah, they never go out of square because they're diamond, whereas the stone ones, which work really, really well, and I've been really, really happy with them for as many years as I've had a Tormic, and I think I've got my first Tormic in 1991, so that's 10, 20, we're going on nearly 30 years I've been using Tormics. And... Uh, The stones, as I said, they work really, really well, but when you do as much sharpening as I do, they will wear on a bit of a camber, only because your, your pressure, your finger pressure, and that's very important. Whereas these, they don't. They stay flat, and therefore, whenever I sharpen something, it sharpens right across the blade. Excuse my head. setting this angle. Um, if you're wondering what angle I'm setting this at, I'm setting this at 30 degrees. Again, using the Tormic, and this, this is unsolicited, I haven't been asked to do this. I um, always set my blades totally at 30 degrees. This one from the factory, I reckon is set at 25 and then people put a secondary bevel of 30. But if you're using a system like this, just stick with your primary bevel and it's much easier and much quicker to do that. It won't take long at all. There you go, you can see a nice, if you can see that, a nice edge all the way along that. And I've got a slight burr at the back, which is what I want. And now we're going to move these boxes. Oh! Can I do it without dropping them? Oh, dear, 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 dear. There we go. The only downside Oh, there might be two downsides to the diamond wheels that I can see. Uh, one is the initial cost, but honestly, what the extra couple of dollars you pay for a diamond wheel, you save in labour. And the other thing is you can't dress them, but that becomes obsolete because being diamonds, you don't have to dress them. And the other, another big bonus I like is you don't get a build-up of stone grinds in your tray. Um, if you've got a T8, it has a, a magnet there that collects all your filings. But I found with the stones, even though they work very well, if I do a lot of sharpening, I've got to constantly be emptying the tray to get rid of all the ground stone, whereas diamonds you don't. So for me, the diamond stones on the Tormic are a go. I do, I love them. The stone I use down here is a, a 600 grit. The reason for that, all my chisels and planes have been sharpened on a tournament before. They're all flat, and therefore I don't have to do any reshaping. I do have another 
T8 in the shed, uh, my wood turning shed, and up there I use the 350 stone because particularly bowl gouges and skews, I have to reshape because <laughs> I'm a bit rough on them. Uh, I'm just trying to work out how to set this up. Oh, screw's got to come out. Do you want to see what I'm doing? Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it around and you can you can have a look, see. Where are we? There you go. So I've just put the blade in here and I was trying to do the cap iron up, but it wasn't going because this screw needed adjusting. There we go. I know I did have a screwdriver here somewhere. Okie dokie. Let's put a bit of blade out and see if we can straighten it up. That is pretty good. We'll back the blade out. Tighten that up. And close the mouth. And that should be. Now you love shoulds. Should be good to go. There's a bit of, bit of timber. Oh dear. Let's leave what's that blackwood. You're not missing anything, I'm just seeing how finely it's set. Not very fine. There we go. Okay. It's a little bit coarser than I want it. Let's back it up. All I want to do is clean up in here, it's just catching a bit. shooting plane. Let's see if that's going to... Oh, look at that. That's much better than yesterday. All I needed was just a little tweaking. <sighs> Where am I going to put those? I'll put those here for the moment. All right, let's have a chat. Oh, let's get those boxes done. Chat on with you. I really am. I'm looking forward to getting them out of here. Uh, Munchie, g'day mate. Roscoe, hello, long time no chat. Is it worth getting wood turning jigs for the Tormac copy? Um, definitely, definitely worthwhile for the Tormac. I, I don't know, I can't speak about the, the copy ones. Um, the record power one is very good, I know that. Um, so look, it, it honestly is. <clears throat> because you get your precise angles, whether it's a skew, whether it's a roughing gouge, whether it's a bowl gouge, or even a parting tool. It is so nice to get that same angle every time. I find with the skews, uh, Theo reckons he doesn't sharpen his skews because he doesn't blunt them. I reckon that's because he doesn't use them. You watch the phone ring now. Um, but I know with my skews, I'm pretty heavy on mine and I use it on very hardwood eucalypt and it does dull but what I find in between sharpens is I've got a diamond stone I don't know what grit it is but when I can feel it's just starting to rub more than cut I just rub the 
stone on the edge of the skew, both sides, only about three times, and then you can feel it, it'll dig back into the, the uh, nail and give you a beautiful cut again. And then after I've done that several times, I might have to go back and put it on the grinder. But again, using the, the jig, you set it up, you get your 20 degree angle, your, uh, what do I generally use? 45 degrees on the skew, I think it is. And yeah, 20 degree angle that way and 45 degree cutting edge. Oh, there's another fence, gotta keep that. Oh, now, what was I up to? Here we go. All right, so I fitted, I fitted it, it all these. Yesterday, there you go. I put all these in yesterday. So what I've got to do now is fit this quad in the inside of the box. That's the big job. Um, then when I've done that, I'll just finish putting the screws in the... I forgot what it's called. Box. I'll finish putting the screws in the box. Then it's just give it all a good polish. I will knock out, punch out some felt circles to put in the bottom. Whether oh, I'll punch them out online, but whether or not I fit them, I don't know. And then what I've decided I'm going to do with all of these is heat shrink them once I've finished and then they'll be ready to be delivered. Here we go. So I've just got to take a tad off here. I'll show you what I'm doing and I'll also show you, with my other glasses, this is bad when I have to put these other glasses on because I, I can't see the chat. Uh, okay, let's go, uh, let's go three and then see, like that, three and then we'll see, one, two, three. And then we'll see. I would prefer to do a lot of little cuts than one big one and balls it up. That will do. Okay. So that's what I've got to do to the rest of these. This surround here. I'm not going to um, paint it. I'm not going to mark it. I'm going to leave it as raw timber. And all things being equal, the box should shut. Which it does, okay. One down, 472 to go. Oh dear, oh, okay, I can leave that one there. No, I'm not gonna leave that one there because I'm gonna knock it over. So, isn't it nice when you've got confidence in yourself? I'm not gonna do that because I'll break it. Oh, all right. What, I'll, um, what I got, oh, Chuck that over there, because what I gotta have a coffee in a minute, I tell you. Oh this is what I'm using. I just made this quad up out of cedar. And so I've got to uh, cut this all to size. I'll show you how I'll do this, that. I'll show you how actually I'll show you how to make the quad now. If you're interested, let me have a catch up first. Um, sharpening jigs, indeed, I missed it. Stupid work. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it, work? It gets in the way of work. Uh, yeah, Rekka Power 6-inch one. Looking nice. 
Steve, is there much of a learning curve when first using a tool mac? Um, Daniel, I don't know if it's a learning curve, but it's definitely a re-education. Yeah, there you go. It's a re-education because for, I don't know, I've got to look at it. I hate to think how long I've been doing this now. I can remember when I started, oh, I've been a woodworker for 25 years and now we're getting to 40 years, I think. Um, and I always used to just use a hot grinder, just an ordinary grinder. And therefore I would have a primary, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, a primary angle. And then I would hand cut the secondary angle just using oil stones, which are up there and I still use from time to time. With a Tormek, I had to completely rethink the way I went about things. But once you get it, I wouldn't use anything else. Once you actually get the, the gist of it, as I mentioned before, with your finger pressure, you've got to maintain even finger pressure because if you press down a little bit too much on the right or the left, it will, you, you won't feel it, but it will. You look at it and all of a sudden your blade's not straight, it's on an angle. That's because you favoured one side. Uh, so that's a, that's a um, again, it's a learnt process. I don't think it's hard, but it's understanding. You've got to maintain uh, straight pressure. Look, for some things, it is a pain, um, honestly. If you get some of the really hard steels, it's a bit of a, um, bit of a challenge and it does take time. Whereas if you're just using, say, up to tool steel isn't a drama. So carbon steel, tool steel's are not a drama. But once you move into the P11s and the M2s, uh, well, that one I just did was A1, I think, and it was okay. But on, on the scheme of things, once you've bought it and you're over that and you're used to it, honestly, I don't think you'd ever look back. But don't let anyone else use it. That's a diamond stone, slightly different, but I have had three, four hundred dollar stones ruined by letting someone else use it. They just don't understand and they don't care. If they get a catch, it's another thing with a diamond stone, you don't get a catch. Whereas I have in the past had slips on the stone and it's taken a big chunk out, which means you've either got to sharpen with clunk, 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 or You've got to dress it, which takes a lot of money off, off your stone. So there you go. Um, I found a record was it easy to use, so it taught me with... Oh, yeah, the horses, of course. I, I like the, the record one too. It's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, only done planes and chisels. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's good. Planes and chisels. I still look young. Oh, mate, you should be inside this decrepit old body, I tell you. Oh, what am I doing? Um, oh, I was going to show you how. You want to know how to make this? This, this is how you make cord. Uh, what do I do? Okay, we'll go over, over to the saw, and we'll go over to the router first. Oh dear. So I machine this stuff up. Um, yesterday, let me change the camera so you can actually see it. There we go. Okay, so I machined this stuff up yesterday to 5mm because that's the thickness that I wanted. And that's the thickness of the lining boards on the box. And I've got a very small round over a bit. I'm just going back to see if you can see that. Whoop, yeah, very small round over bit in the router there. These, these things are absolutely awesome as well, these anti-kickback chasps. I'm just making sure here. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay. So what I do, if I've got a lot to do, I don't mind having stock of this stuff. So I'll do both sides. Now when you're doing it, if you look at the grain, it's running that way. 
If you run the route a bit along there, you're going to get tear out on that edge. So what I do is I run the route a bit with the grain and I do both sides. So in this particular instance, because the grain's running that way, I'm going to run the router through here. And if I look at this one, the grain's running the other way. So I will then turn it over and I'll route the other side. So this will be rounded over and this on the other side will be rounded over. I'll show you. Okay, here we go. And instead of turning it over that way, no, actually I will, because the grain's running that way. Okay, in that case, the grain changed direction. Normally, what happens is you run, you run the router along this way where the grain is and the grain's going the other way, so you actually run the bead on the other side, so you have a round over there and a round over here. But in this case, the, gra the grain changed direction is running that way and it's running that way, so I've done them both on the same side. And this is if you're doing a lot. Uh, for me, I don't mind. I use, I use this particular... Um, can we get up there? Oh, I'll, take, I'll take you up the other side of the saw. There you go. Whoop. So, just hang on to your lunch if you've just had it. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, am I looking forward to having a tidy workshop or what? Okay. Now, <laughs> I've lost that bit of wood. What do I do with it? How do you... Oh, there it is. Oh, I found it. All right. So because I've got a gap under the fence here, I'm actually not going to run it with the curve up because it'll slide under the fence and my piece will be wider than I want. I only want it the width of this board. So I want it five mil square. So I'm going to run with the curve facing down. Like that. One, turn it around. Two. That's it. Now you got two bits of quad. I will go and get that camera and bring it back over here. I can definitely feel the coffee in the offering. Oh, okay. So that's, that's how you get the quad. Now to cut it, I'm using the picture frame as guillotine, which is this thing over here, which you can't see, so you might as well have that one. And all I do, this makes life very easy, is I pop it in there. It's foot operated. You do that, and then I push it through over the other side where I've got a, um, a fence set up. And 
that sort of don't like the feel of that. No, we'll do a let me get another one. A couple of years ago, I had my thumb under it like that. And I was watching what I was doing. I went, whop, straight through my thumb. And it didn't tickle, I'll tell you. Okay, so there's two of those. They're the long ones. And then I want a short one. So we'll bring... I'll actually cut these in a batch, but I'll show you how I do one first. Okay, so I've got two long ones there. Put them over there. And that's the side one. It's another side one. So I'll show you how to do that without a picture frame of guillotine in a tick. Let me just get a box and we will continue. Who's off? Middle's off. That's the little monster, Andy, you remember. Middle, good night. Catch you later on. Thanks for dropping in. Hey, Julian. No, I've only just started streaming, but I've been working for a while. Mate, I love the setup. I tell you what, you can come and tidy my, my workshop up if you like. That, that would be awesome. And how are you finding the, the record lathe? I know I love mine. Okay. Um. G'day, Wes. How you going? Oh, there you go. How are you, two yums? Long time no here, Bella. Lovely to have you in here. I just thought that was that was so funny when you commented on Bob eating that pancake, and that was the dog's name as well. So there you go. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Right, now. Oh. Are you doing any photography? This is two yums. All right, so now, that's just got a little blemish I've got to knock off. And I reckon it's going to be pretty darn close. Ah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see the email. I saw it and I thought, oh, that's a nice lathe. I like that. Hmm. So I will get to my emails at some stage, I'm hoping. That's Julian. Oh dear. One, two, three. Cool to be cooler than cool. I, I put a, a thing on Instagram, oh, it was a while ago now, and it was my little MX-5 sports car and Bob leaning out the window. And one of the comments was, I don't care how cool you think you are, you'll never be as cool as Bob in a sports car. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, 
Oh, I've got to replenish all my sanding bits and bits. G'day, John! Now, we haven't, we haven't talked for ages, mate. We're getting the old crew back. That's it. I hate this. <laughs> it's nerve wracking. The good thing about if you've got a lot to do, if you do mess one up, well, you can use it on another one. Oh, look at that. We're going good. We're going good. I'll just spin that around and we'll do that. There you go. So that looks quite nice, I think. Yep. And it shuts well. Whoops. I'll do one more and then I'm going to have a coffee. Because I deserve one. Mm. What I might do is cut... Uh, cut a few of these up to start with. Oh dear. Where are we up? No, I uh, no, um, it's my son's girlfriend's dog called Bella. But yeah, she's, uh, she's not bad, but her and Bob have issues which sort of get my teeth on edge. But they'll sort it out. Oh dear. It is a good name to have. Hey Paul, how are you? Thanks for dropping in. Uh. Yeah, I think we, since we last spoke, John, I'm, I'm actually homeschooling both our grandkids now. We were just one. But then when all this stuff happened, there was rubbish going on at the school. So we went, no, nah, well... Homeschool, both of them. But honestly, I, I think they're learning more by being practical around here than they did sitting in the classroom learning how to make spitballs. If, if you're still allowed to make spitballs, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he sits there. He, I, I don't know if I, I wouldn't have told you, Bella, but, uh, a while back, he was Sue was cooking some crumb cutlets, lamb cutlets, and Bob was right underneath her feet while she was crumbing them and just looking at her. And she says, it's not going to happen. You're not getting anything. And then she actually, she, you know, you, you dip the cutlet in the egg and then roll it in the breadcrumbs and then you dip it back in egg or what? I don't know. Anyway, she did it, but she missed the bowl and she dropped it, it didn't hit the floor, Boom! and he was off. So he reckons it's a good deal now, so when everyone's any, doing any cooking in the kitchen, he just stays there on the off chance a roast beef is going to fall into his face. God, oh dear, oh dear. Mm. That makes or makes, oh, I don't care. It's all the same to me. <clears throat> Good to hear, Paul. You're A-OK. -okay. G'day, John. <clears throat> yeah, and if they complain about the teachers, John, you just send them to their room. End of story. Steve, Angie heard you talking about speakers and immediately turned around and asked me if it involved me. <laughs> I said, why, yes, it was. I'm in trouble. Oh. Yeah, that's our middle name, mate. This is our middle name trouble. <clears throat> yeah, oh, it's funny, Paul. It's lovely for you to say that. I wish my grandkids had 
spend more time down here with me, but it's because it's so accessible, all of a sudden it's not important. I get people that come here at a, a young 14 year old lad um, a while ago and he came to do some blacksmithing and while we were waiting for the forge to uh, fire up, I said, do you want to go at wood, wood turning? And he'd never done any of that. So he ended up turning a, a wooden bowl and oh, he was wrapped. His dad came down, he said, oh, I wish I could come here. He said, I want to do that. So, and my grandkids are out there playing games. So I can't, whatever. Oh, all right. Let's cut some more of these. I'll just, I'm just going to do a couple of these. Or you come over and watch me if you want. Here you go. No, there's no point because you don't see me, so you might as well get that picture. Oh, I'll tell you the story. I got shot. I'll tell you the story in a minute. Um, bum, 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 bum. I just want to know how close these are going to be. Are they going to be good enough or not good enough? I don't know. Put that one up there because that's a spare. You're better off to cut these too long than too short. Absolutely. Where's the spare ones going there? Brenda! Oh, I'll do this. Brenda! Hello! I, I'm sorry I missed a comment that you put on. I, don't, I think it was a... Yeah, it was. It was a bowl that I turned. And I missed it, so I answered it. Um, thank you for your patience. Normally, as most of you know, I answer them as soon as I get them, but I had a comment there from somebody else and I thought, oh, I miss Brenda. So she'll think I'm rude. So I'm not. I'm just forgetful. And these, these are much more accurate than a, a docking saw, for sure. Boxworths that I've done there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now I'll do the long ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Thank you for being so understanding, my dear. Um, Oh, do you build bird has No, I do. I do bees, beehive. Beehives, though. These are, they're all beehive boxes over there. And there's some behind me, and I think there's some over there in that chair. They're all um, Australian native bees. As I found out the other day, very interesting. They're only in the northern part of Australia because I've been asked to do another television show or a series of them. And I thought, oh, well, I'll do bee boxes. And I was talking to the uh, expert on Sting's bees, uh, Dr. Tim Hurd. And he said, no, he said, uh, waste of time having them in South Australia because they don't have them. So we might be build some bee hotels down the track. That would be nice. Let's see what uh what we can do with that 
Supersonic. How are you, darling? I, that, that I'll tell everyone. I don't care. I'm going to tell them. That's my granddaughter. Hello, darling. Oh, it's so nice to see you. I wish I could see you in person. But big, 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 big hugs and kisses to you. All right. And I hope that I'll tell Nanny that you were on and we'll get a video link up or something, which would be awesome. It would. And if you ever get down here, there's a place in this workshop and boy, could we have some fun. There you go. This is very amazing. It's not as amazing as you are, my dear. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do, Ray. I will, I'll ring. Oh, I'll ring Nan up and she can come down and say hello to you. How would that be? Would you like me to do that? <laughs> How lazy. Ringing up the house. How you've been doing? Oh, how long have you been doing woodwork? Long time. Um, 30. Hello. Hello, I've got Miss Raven on the chat if you want to come down and say hello. All right, two seconds. Okay. There you go. Nanny Australia's coming down, darling. Um, oh, I think I started maybe, two, yeah, 30, 30 plus years. I was thinking, for, no, it would be 40. Crikey. 40 years. Um, been making furniture for properly uh, 30 years. And I sort of made bits and pieces before that. But I didn't know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing now either. So I've just been doing it often enough to think, oh, that looks right. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Trevor, g'day, mate. Oh, you got power and you got the internet. Mate, you'd be thinking you're living the life of Riley up there. <clears throat> that uh, middle, that uh, foot machine, that's called a picture frame is guillotine. It's got very, very sharp blades either side and it cuts mainly at 45, but it does have a table. Look at that. There you go. Say hello to Raven. Hello, darling. There you go. This is a family get together. There you go. She just popped in and everyone said, hello, super, what was it? Super. Super, super static. I, like, I know that name. Absolutely. That's, that's. It's big me. hug, darling. You're too late. I've already done them. Well, big hugs from Nanny Australia then. All right. We, we give you a three-way hug, all right? You've got to pretend you're in there. You ready? You're in. Oh. Ah. Everyone else, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to have a, a biscuit or something because we don't get often a chance to talk to our lovely, gorgeous, wonderful granddaughter who is in Canada. So there you go. So, mwah. Love you, darling. That's it. Now you go back to doing the housework. Oh, I'm going back to talk to you. Hello, John. John. How are you, mate? So, so love wasn't that lovely? Talk you've, soon, sweetie. You've made, you've made Nanny my day, oh, absolutely. darling. Absolutely. Here you go and say good day to Mum for us as well. Absolutely. Hey, Trude, if you're watching, thank you for your, all your help. If you know what Absolutely. I mean. You're yeah. a you're you're a wonder girl. You're a bonus. Oh dear, oh dear. So there we go. Um, I'm a cuddle too. He's just done that. Too. <laughs> what she said, she'd give Maddie a cuddle for you too. Oh dear. I'm, I've got to get back where I am now. Oh, I'm wet. She's gone. Oh, the, I shall convey your wishes to her. Wes. Oh dear. It's a framers guillotine. That's it. Oh, all well, right. I'll tell you, Andy. I'll tell you what happened to me thing over in a minute. Catch you, Roscoe. Can we all hit the like button and the subscribe button too, please? That would be awesome. But most of you subscribe, so it's all good.
I shall pass all your well wishes on. Matthew, g'day mate, thanks for dropping in. I'm new around here, my father Julian Hughes got me into this video, I must say. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing better. Mate, I tell you what Matthew, take your father's example of how a workshop, <laughs> a workshop should look, not mine, all right? Because mine is a mess. It is a family show. There you go. Oh, good, BG. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. On your box. All right, all right. I'll tell you what happened with where I got shot. I, did, uh, oh, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was funny, really. Um, well, anything's funny because if not, you cry. So there you go. There you go. I think I've got it there and I think I've got it in the back here somewhere. Yeah, there. Now, this relates, Matthew, to what I was talking about. So if you don't listen to any old guys, listen, <laughs> listen to this one, telling you a story about having a tidy workshop. I was down here this morning um, doing just what you saw me do there with some boxes, and I turned the glue gun on, which is here, because yesterday, if you remember, I ran out of glue, so I had to go and buy some new glue. And I've got some and I'll stick another glue stick in there because we'll be using it shortly. And I turned it on and I'm over here and there was, a, it's cleaned up now obviously, but you couldn't move before. And I'm standing there cutting that stuff on, on the guillotine and, whoa, something's burning. Oh, that, yeah, what's, oh, the glue guns. Anyway, I turned around, picked the glue gun up. No, it wasn't touching anything, cleaned it off. Had a sniff. No, it wasn't that burning. Now I looked around and next to the fridge, there's this fire and my apron's all gone and the back's gone. What had happened, I had knocked my heat gun onto the ground and when I was climbing over it, I turned it on and that's pumping out 550 degrees and it heated the nylon webbing I've got holding the back of my apron together and it caught fire and burnt and so it melted and burnt into my apron there. And I thought, well, that's a pity. But it's going to be a good story to tell people on why you should have a tidy workshop. So that's it. Mm. Ah. Oh, good. I want pictures, BG. Yeah, I think, I think that'd be a great idea if you did. It, probably, I need more sheds. I've got a heap, but I want more. Isn't that lovely, getting to talk to me granddaughter? Oh, I'm going to have a coffee because of that. That deserves a coffee. I'm going to have a coffee. Ray, do you want a chocolate biscuit? Oh, if you don't want it, it doesn't matter. Papa, I'll eat it for you. <laughs> That's fine. That's if I can get into my fridge. Oh, now I can't get into the fridge. Ah, uh, it'll be right. It'll be right. Oh, we got milk. We got chocolate biscuits. We got vanilla flavouring. Oh, I do like that. Well, that should work because everything's good. I had trouble with this yesterday, didn't I? You mutt. I want that one back. It, it, it threw me. Oh, it's full. Look, Look at that, that. That's me coffee pods. from the last couple of days. Well, I can't see why that's... Oh, don't tell me I... I don't believe that. No, that hasn't been... That hasn't been coffee-fired yet. There we go. 
Oh, where's Max? Hate you fangled things. Uh, yeah, I, I did, but I, I put a new pot in there this morning, but perhaps it just lost interest. A bit like me. Oh, I've got to get these done. I'm not spending another day on them, I can tell you. I'm, I'm over it. Okay. Actually, I'll put that there. Here we go. And then what I'll do, I'll swing this Kamaruka around. And bring it in. There you go. And then you can watch what I'm doing. And I won't. I'm just wondering if, oh no, see that? I don't know. It's all too high tech. Oh dear. Okay. Did I do any long ones? I didn't, did I? What a tis was. Oh no, I, I got these. I got these now, Bella. Look at that. that I'll, I'll unwrap it. Look, it's, it's been melted. But oh, and mm, I've got wafer inside. Oh, they're yum. Mm. Let me put a bit of milk in there. It was a nice coffee yesterday. I'm hoping this one's just as good. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Oh, dear. Ah, okay. Now, I've got to do the longer ones. So I've done those. How come I got... Oh, that's right. Raven came on, didn't you? Mm. Hey Gary, how you going mate? Thanks for dropping in, I'll give you a biscuit but I'm down my last one. <laughs> um, this plane here, hang on, oh, here you go. This plane's the Veritas shooting plane. So you complain when you're shooting like that, which I'm doing in this donkey's ear, or you can actually dress by doing it that way, and this handle will come up 90 degrees. I believe Stanley had one, I think it was a 52 or a 51. Excuse me. It was a set. And... It had the mitre box or the mitre jig and the plane together. One was a 51, one was a 52. I can't remember which was which. Um, Lee Nielsen also has one which is pretty close to the Stanley one. And this Veritas one's a different design, but does the same thing. Yeah, that, that's on my everyday list, Matthew. It's not just Christmas. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. So, now, <laughs> I've got to go back. Oh, I'll just do it. Oh, I'll just have a, I'll have a guess. Here we go. That's the best thing. Oh, 
Boom, boom, boom. So I'm just having a, a rough guess on that, and then I'll what's it's got something ah it's got a little something caught there. Just see how close this is. Go have a fair bit taken off there, so we might just go. At the moment, I'm, I'm setting this up so I can work out um, how close so I can cut them and then I just have to refine them a little bit but if I can get in the ballpark I'm going to be happy and we take just a, a fraction more off bear with me I'll be back in full production in a minute. Whoops. I think I'll leave it at that. As a, what do they call those things? Control piece, that's it. So I'll just knock over one. I had, to, I had two. One, two, three. Okay, I'll do these. I'm going to have to lo lower that handle, the, the leg. It's too hard to get my leg up that high. Ba -boom, ba -boom. like um, all repetitive work too. Take a break from it. You keep doing this, you get complacent, and the next thing you know, you got a finger lying in the bottom of your scrap tray because you've just lost concentration. That's why I'm only doing six at a time, or six boxes at a time. you tend to get very sort of blase about it. What's happened there? It's a bit strange. And um, yeah, you just, your mind starts to wander onto other things and that is not good for anything that you're using that is sharp 
is concerned. Three more to go. Downhill run. I'll show you what you can do in a minute. <clears throat> Another thing I use this for is um, cock beating on drawers. Anywhere where you've got fine cuts. Oh, and of course, picture frames. Okay, so they're all done. Let's swing this around here and we'll go back to that one. Oh, here we go. And I'm back in shot. Oh, I could sit there and eat biscuits and drink coffee all day long. Oh, look, Wes, you don't need a shooting plane. Um, ordinary planes, as I demonstrated yesterday, you just a normal plane will do shooting. The thing is, make sure that it is at 90 degrees because sometimes the cheeks of the planes aren't at 90 degrees of the sole, so when you're shooting, sometimes it's not square, but that's easy enough. Remedy, just a, a piece of glass and some carborundum and away you go. Yeah, number sixes are good. <laughs> yeah, believe me, Julian, there's times I'd use a 22. Actually, speaking of which, I, years ago, Decades ago, in fact, I had this idea of safari furniture. And the idea was I was going to make furniture out of pine. This is when all the distress stuff was in. And then take it out to the bush or the backyard or whatever and blast it with a, 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 a 10 gauge shotgun, a 410. And the idea was it was then, you know, wild furniture that had been captured in the wild, wild. and the uh, poster that I'd had designed was a piece of furniture out in the bush somewhere, long grass and everything, and um, a nice female model, possibly in a bikini. This is going back to the 90s, mind you, with one foot and a piece of furniture on its back with four legs up in the air, and one foot on the furniture with a 410 shotgun in a hand. And, um, yeah, I forget what the caption was underneath. Freshly made or freshly killed or something or other. And I thought it was great. Great idea. But, no, nah, it didn't take. Oh, what if some of the lead pellets are left in there and you've got to clean it out? And they, oh, it's all too hard. So I've had some off-the-wall ideas. So there you go, 22. There is a place for 22 in furniture making. Mm. Herbie, hubby, just got here, first time we're not alive. Oh, there you go, thanks, well, welcome. Welcome to the chat room, there are a good bunch of people in there. You got any questions, ask away. Got any woodwork relating ones, I will do my best to answer them. Uh. Yeah, shooting planes can be cruel, but if you got them set right, they're nice. Forgive me, Steve, just trying to start the idea. Is that some sort of bench press? No, that thing I was using there was a picture frame. It's a guillotine. This thing I'm going to be using in a minute is a donkey's ear shooting ball, which I'll show you what that's for. Um. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Father and son actually talking. I think it's nice. It might be in a chat room, but at least they're communicating. Uh, 
I tell you what, I'm going to take more, more than an hour's rest when I finish these. But anyway, Julian, how, know how that is, oh. All right, now, what are we up to? I've done that, I've got to do the long ones now, don't I? Here we go, let's fit some long ones. Lady boom, lady lady. Give them a couple of shots. Oh, oh that coffee's nice. Not quite as nice as the one I had yesterday, I don't know why. Made with the same machine. Same coffee. It's one of those things. Here we go. Try another one. This is sort of like watching grass grow, but I loved the comment yesterday. Um, I really forget who, who said it. <laughs> wow, real woodworking. And I, I thought about it, I thought, actually, that's, that's quite nice. Because I don't know. Well, there's two things here. I don't know of any other YouTube and woodworking type people that do this and actually do so-called so precision work live where you know everything can turn to mud in a very short space of time. Another one done. So I thought that was good. But the thing is, you see, I'm so confident with a good crew like you in the chat room that if I do stuff up, you're not going to lampoon me unless, of course, it's on the router, and I expect that. And um, I think it's great that you just accept what I do. So thank you. And... This is what I said yesterday, and I sincerely mean it. It's so nice to have people there so I can do this. Because, look, I would eventually do it. I have to do it. But it is so nice to have people that are interested in woodwork um, in the shed and having someone to talk to, so I'm not talking to myself. Ah, oh, I don't like that one. That's, <laughs> that's, that's going in too easy, so we've got to put a bigger one in there sometime. Oh dear. Remind me I put that one on top so I don't fit it again. This one's slightly different because I actually did some marquetry in that one. Oh, got the air conditioner on. Is it making a difference? No, I don't think so. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually meet? Or we'll meet up somewhere. <laughs> then, we, then we might find out we don't like each other. So no, perhaps it's, perhaps it's just as well that we are here online. And thank you for all the lovely emails I've been getting. It's been really nice. And I, I do, I feel privileged that you feel comfortable enough to share your projects with me. And I'll tell you what, some of them are... <laughs> some of them, really, I look at it and I go, <laughs> they're sending me this, why aren't they having their own YouTube show and I'll watch them? Because the work is absolutely amazing. Oh, I'm getting on like a house on fire now. Oh, now I'll do that one and I'll do that one and I'll get this one. 
And then I can put that one down and that one on top because I know I've got to do that one again. That was easy, that one, wasn't it? Hey. I'll show you how I did these too shortly because I've got one more, one more to do. It's funny, isn't it? Um, and I was just having some fun there with uh, Julian and Matthew, so there was no malice intended whatsoever. But what amuses me is I used to live in a very small country town and we wouldn't talk to our neighbours. She was always complaining that her dog was doing stuff in her garden. And I mean, this is a bush town, right, where there's no fences. Um, <clears throat> and it's just a little community. But we wouldn't talk. We'd sort of glare at each other over the fence. And yet, if we were ever in town, which was about 50 miles away, and we met each other in the shops, we'd stand and talk for half an hour. Uh, the other thing is if there was a flood and we got flood in, people you wouldn't talk to, you'd all be down the pub, best of mates. As soon as the flood waters come down, that's it, you wouldn't talk to each other again. My dad said the same thing. He said, you could be with people that you don't like on land, but if you got into a yacht and you're on, you know, well, in this case, Sydney Harbour, and you see someone that you didn't like on land, but they're sailing, you wave to them and you talk. Jeez, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but they're all going in. <clears throat> Weird, isn't it? It's just the human, human whatever. Oh, I, know, I just thought I'd throw that one in there. Just, oh, where are we up to? Oh, it's back pain. And stuff. I'll tell you what, mate, it's all with back pain. Mine's killing me at the moment. But you just got to do it. It's funny, you know. Oops, this one's going to be a bit of a challenge still, I think. Yep, this one we're going to have to cut some slightly longer ones on, so I might. I might put these over here. Look, I don't want to do the old soldier routine on it anyone, but if there's any ex-military, about my age or a little bit younger, out there in chat room land, would you agree, whether you liked it or not, it did instill in you a certain tenacity or possibly discipline that if you've got a job to do, you've got to do it. It doesn't matter how hot it is, it doesn't matter how you feel, it doesn't matter how wet it is, it doesn't matter how tired you are, you just get in there and you do it, you can collapse afterwards. It's, um, yeah, it's funny, I've found that with a, a lot of people that have got out, they just have this uh, discipline at, at sticking at something, whereas people in, it, you know, if you haven't, well, it doesn't matter. But a lot of other people, oh, it gets a bit hard, we'll give it a miss, we won't do it. Oh dear. I think we're going to have to play around. These, I don't know why, but these are just a, a tad bigger. I mean, it's all the same box. It's all made by the same, same sizes and everything. Oh, that's all right. That's another reason I didn't do them all together, just in case we have this situation where a couple might be a little bit... bigger than what I'm cutting. Look at that. There you go. Oh, where are we? There we go. And another one. What I'm going to do once I've got all these in, I'm just going to put a touch of um, hot glue on them to make sure they stay there but primarily the goal at the moment is to 
get them so they're all fitted. Oh, where are we up to? Oh, yep, do 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 do. Oh, let me do this while I'm talking. It's funny, Matthew, it really is. I, my daddy's been passed now, I don't know, 20, nearly 20 years. And whenever he did anything, I wouldn't be impressed, I wouldn't be surprised because there's dad. Dad knows how to do all the cool stuff. You know, why, why is he so amazed? You know, he's dad. Dad always gets it right. But it's not until <laughs> you get on a bit that you realise the old man might not have known everything. <laughs> and I sort of look at what he did now and go, my goodness, I should have shown him more, <laughs> more appreciation. Because he, he did some astounding things. But no, it was dad, you know, it's... My um, grandkids, it's when everything breaks, oh, Papa can fix. It's sort of, we've got this inbuilt thing, we know how to do it, but no, we're all learning. You never get it right. Even when you think you got it right, it's not. Oh, dear. I'll just... down to the, the last little bits. I've got to go and pick a pool table up this afternoon. It's going to be fun. And uh, this is a pool table that someone... I might have been streaming and Susie came down. She said someone just asked us if we want a pool table. It's not on my things that I wanted, but oh, I thought, why not? And I've rung up to get a quote to get it recovered because it's, it really isn't in good condition. It's in deplorable condition. But I figure I can do the timber work on it. And I, I think I'll do that as a, that'll be a video project, building a, a pool table, which will be fun. Oh. So yeah, the uh, I rang these people up that recover pool tables, and apparently they do it in house. So my idea was they could come and pick it up, take it away, and whilst they had it away for as long as they wanted, I could make the frame. But apparently no. So that will be a job for next year. And as I said yesterday, I think next year is the year of the bee jobs. I'll finish making the bed. I'm going to finish writing a book. I'm going to do bee boxes. And, and a billiard table. I knew there was another bee in there somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'll cut two of these down to fit into that. And then I'll put that in there so I'll show you how I did that. And then I'll show you how to Cut mitres, if you wish. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm in the fifty spirit. I just realised what I was whist. Whistling. Whoops. I'll be with you in a tick. Just got to lop these two off. a movie yesterday on Netflix you know when you you're watching a movie and you think oh that's gonna be a really good movie and you watch it and you go it's gonna get better 
oh no, it's going to be really good. It's going to get better. And then it's over and it didn't get better. Yeah, it was one of those movies. <laughs> Why did I just waste my afternoon watching that? But if I hadn't have, I wouldn't have known it wasn't worth watching. And if I tell you what the name is, there's got to be someone out there who go, oh, I watched it, it was a great movie. So I won't tell you what it was. Oh, where are we going, that one? Uh, that's one of the things I love about box making, you do have to be reasonably precise. I mean, if you're doing a, a kitchen table or something, you can afford to be a few mil out and you'll get away with it. But but um, a box, no, you don't get away with it. All right. Uh, all right, let's have a change of subject for a bit because I'm sick of doing that. I've got these three to do here, but I've got to do a lot of work on this one. So we will start doing that and I'll show you how you can do what I did without half the stuff I've got. If I can undo this clamp. Oh. Here we go. What a boom. I don't like putting lubricants on clamps because they slip when you don't want them to. But the other downside is if you don't, they jam sometimes. Okay, so what are we up to? Here we go. I told you yesterday how I made these. So I'll show you because I found one of the one of the blanks around. Oh, and you might want to one day make something with a heart in it. It's very hard to um, make a heart with a point on it like that. So what I did was I actually cut that shape out, which is half a heart, perfected it, and then cut that side, turned around, cut that side, then glued them together and then veneered one side and then veneered the other side. That gave me the perfect heart. The, um, the embroidery says he did on one of her machines. So what I did was with a hot glue gun, went around the back of the heart here, put that on and then cut off the waist. Now what I'm gonna do is Press the right button. Now what I'm going to do is put it into this box. And again, hot glue gun. Don't be scungy with the glue. Close to the edge. You want to make sure you've got a nice um, height because we've got all this stuff here, you've got to be pretty darn quick though to do it. And then centre it, push down. And keep pressure on there until that glue goes off. It's not very long and it'll go off. But if you push it and you can hear it still cracking, the glue hasn't set yet. There you go, now it's set. The same 
with the leather on the inside. Pop it in there like that. Now with this, you don't put as much glue down. So have a pretty thin layer of glue there. Again, be quick. Put it in. I think I might have left that too late. No, that's all right. And then using a, a sanding block of some description. Rub it in and down. So there you go. Now we've got to make the boards up. They actually go in there and I don't think I've got any the right size. No, I've got to make some new ones from scratch. So we'll do that. Right about now. Ooh. No. So what I can do, I can use that as one. I'll just use, see if I've got any close. These are all too, too small, I think. So don't throw those away if you've got any that are too small because You'll make more boxes down the track, and if you've already got the stuff, it's good. Mm -mm. Okay, let me have a catch up. Oh, do, 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 buddy, do. I don't know how far I'm behind, so I'm going. I'm going to go and see if I can catch up with you one. <coughs> Dum ba dum bum ba dum bum. Oh, I'm not that far back. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, 410 shotgun used to be called orchard guns. Yeah, it used to be called lady shotgun too, didn't they, Trevor? <coughs> Do you glue those in, Steve, or just use friction? Um, it depends, Andy. These particular ones, I'm going to put a bit of hot glue on it and glue them in. There's no point in me putting any other glue because yesterday I waxed them all so the wax won't um, adhere but the hot glue gun will and they're a good tight fit. The bottom ones, the, the one in the box section itself, no that's just a friction fit. What I would do if they were um, top end boxes, I would actually nail them in and then cover the nails up but these are they're not bottom end boxes by any means, but they're not top end either. <clears throat> uh... Actually, I, I want to do that, BJ. I want to do uh, make a knife up in the forge. And then we'll make the knife handle live as well. That'll be something down the track. Well, there's another B I can do next year, Bernie things. <sighs> New Yankee, that's uh, Norm, Norm Abrams, yep. Yeah, he was good. I, I once got asked, you know, I based myself on you, know, where'd you get the concept from? Was it Norm Abrams? <laughs> No, actually it was Tim Allen and Tim the Tool Man. That's what I wanted to be. I, I reckon he was great. Oh, I don't know if I could have put up with Al as long as he did. Yeah, um, over there, John, over there, music stands, uh, you'll see them over... Over near the lights, just behind the light stand there. Yeah, they're, they're, so they're coming ahead. And just quietly shut up. <laughs> now I do, I want to get them done. I really want to get all these old jobs out so then I can have new stuff to do. Uh, yeah, that's what it could be too, Julian, stubbornness. I'm not that far back. 
When you get older, you learn, you know less than ever. Not only that, you've got to relearn what you forgot. That's what gets me. Ah. <laughs> Good on you, Joey. <laughs> That'll come back and haunt you, my son, I'm telling you. Oh, well, it has already, two comments later. Ah. All right, the movie was Ava, A-V-A, -A. Justin. It was good and it really had the potential to go somewhere, but it didn't. I tell you what, I, I can sit and binge watch Stargate Atlantis. I don't know how many times I'm on it, but that's my nine eyes. That's my nine eyes show. I love just... Watching only, I wouldn't even watch episode, watch half an episode, watch McKay go off his head, and then that's it, I go to sleep. Yeah, home improvement was, it was, it was the business. Um, oh, look, oh, yeah, we'll do this one first and then um, I'll just run a router over it. So you might as well come over to the finger muncher. I'll just run this over and I'll do the, the profile and then we'll cut the inserts to go into that. Oh dear. You, you want to see how messy it is? I'll, I'll show you what I'm coping with. Oh, where are we? Is that it? No, that's not it. That's it. There you go. There, that's what I'm coping with at the moment. Half finished bee boxes, half finished chopping boards, all sorts of rubbish. Oh, I mean, the other side is never trust a man with a tidy shed. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to drop this down a bit because I don't want it up that high. We'll just see what that does. I've done a half round there, then I can do the other side. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll drop it down. Clean that up to the rollover.
Okay. So, how long do I want it? I'll cut that off there, put that on there, go back to there. So this is cutting the um, inside of the box. Uh, inserts. If you haven't made one of these, make one of these. Best things ever. Called a bench hook. It gave me brass, huh? Okay, I have two of those. It's, I, I always think, look, it's great to have tools in the shed. I love them. But it's also really good if you know how to work without them. Because there are times when you uh, can quite easily be in a situation where you have to fix something and you haven't got access to your machines. Or you're in someone else's workshop and their machines or their tools aren't what you're used to. It's always good to be able to adapt. So we'll do, we'll fit all these by hand. Even Even the, the router, okay, sure, I used the router bit then to round it over, but I could have just as easily used a, a block plane or a spoke shave to get the same result. Oh, dear. Where's that going in there? There we go. <clears throat> Oh, um, what do I want? No, I don't want that. Do I? I want this one again. I'll do this with the donkey, and then when I'm doing the quad on the other side, I'll show you how you can make a jig up and cut precise, exact mitres using the chisel. Oh, so that can go there, that can go there. Here we go, pick the best side. That'll do. Where's me? Where did my plane go? Oh look, I'll tell you what. We'll, we won't even use the shooting plane, we'll use, use the number three. Just so you know, you don't need all the flash stuff to get things out. Oh, there's me, and here I am too. Um, there you go. Okay, so this is just a number three. A mitre. <coughs> How far have we got? Oh, we've got a fair way to come off. So we can mark that. With a pencil. If you want, I won't even use a Japanese saw. I'll just use a, a tenon saw. J 
ja just to show you don't need a Japanese saw. Miter on this. Okay, so we're nearly nearly there you don't want to take too much off but I reckon we'll take four off and then test it No point in rushing it, just take your time. That is so close. That's so close it fits. There you go. Same with the other one. And if you don't want to use the number three, get a five and a half. See if that's going to fit. There you go. A bit of blade out on that. Ouch! That hurt. Pulling out of the bottom, eh? It is too. There you go. What it, what it was doing, it actually um, bit into the shooting board and jammed my finger, which wasn't very nice at all. Mm -mm. I'll go back to the Japanese so only because they're quicker. Much more quicker. I'll fit this one and then I'll have a chat. Another three. Hey, when you're good, you're good. Look at that. Okay. La da 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 What do you reckon? Another three? I'll go another two. I'm not, I'm not that confident. Oh. 
There we go. And the lucky last. It's another good good thing to have your tools sharp because I find there's absolutely nothing worse than reaching for a tool and the damn thing blunt. It annoys me. And, and I really enjoy sharpening tools, so oh, let's give this one a go. Will this one fit? That'll fit too, there you go. We'll do all sorts of different things just to show you it doesn't matter what tools you use. I actually have a video of how I made this donkey's ear. I don't know, I'll have a look in a minute and see what it's under. Now yeah, that is, oh, I reckon I'll take two, two off. Take one. I don't, I don't. I don't trust myself with two. No, perhaps I'll, I'll take two then. Ah, oh, come on. There you go. No. Nah. I tell you what, it's close. There we go. There you go, all fitted by hand. All right, I'll show you how to do the um, quad using the chisel. But I'm gonna have a chat first for my own amusement. Oh, oh where are we up to? Ah. Muddy din, muddy din, din. Put a bum bum, did it in bum. Yeah, Max, where are you, Max? Medics on sale. Oh, that must have been when I went over the router. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's true, Brenda. It's good to know. You can do things without needing all these tools. Good night, Wesley. Have a nice night. Good night, Ange. <clears throat> um, just, yeah, look, it depends. If you're getting into woodwork, but that hardback, this hardback Japanese saw is, I love it, I really love it, but if you're new to woodworking, it can be a bit of a pain to use. I would suggest definitely a crosscut saw, um, oh no, a rip saw, sorry, not a crosscut saw, a rip saw, that's a 22 inch, that's a Lee Nelson, but you can, I don't know where my old one is, oh here you go, this one's 100 years old and it still cuts as good as the day it was made and uh, depending if you want to get into the cabinet work a gent saw is good one of these little gent saws you use those for cutting dovetails or depending on your 
budget, a Lee Nelson dovetail saw. That is my all-time favourite dovetail saw. It is awesome. So that's, that's what I'll be looking at, a, a rip saw and a back saw. And go from there, but make sure they're sharp and get ones that you can sharpen. Don't get the ones with shark teeth that you can only sharpen once. <coughs> um. Oh. Hey, Tango! How you going, mate? Hey, haven't seen you for such a... <laughs> Foxtrot Lima Tango! <laughs> Good to have you back in, mate. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's what that is, Spanish cedar. In fact, in fact, seeing you mention it, Tanga, that's what all these were. They were all humidors, which I did for a TV show a long time ago. And then, um, yeah, they, some of them are being converted into the jewellery box. But it's all solid Spanish cedar, except for the plywood ones. Oh, hang on, is that... I can't remember now. They might be... No, no, I don't think they are. I think, no, they're plywood ones. Um, this one's, oh, that one's there, solid Spanish cedar. Except, oh, there we go. I'll pick it up later. Um, except for the top, which is Queensland maple. There you go. But that's what you do. Oh, dear. Hey, all. Oh, look, the whole gang's here. Oh. Okay, now, if you're going to do mitres, excuse me, like this quad up here, and you don't have a picture frames guillotine or a hand guillotine or a donkey's ear shooting board, here is the easiest, cheapest and quickest way you can do it. Oh, dear. Let me just get a... What have we got here? Ah. Yeah, that'll do. Oh. Bit of junk stuff. I'm just going to... What's that? Oh. <laughs> Can't remember what that was for. I won't use it because it's got words written on it, which generally means I used it for something at some stage. Here we go. Oh. Da -da -bum. Ba -de -de -de. All right, a couple of bits of plywood. Saw, so I can cut a bit of plywood up. You just want a straight edge on it. Japanese saws don't like cutting plywood. We're nearly there, so it doesn't matter. All right. You've got to have two straight edges. Make sure you've got two straight edges. Right? New member! Oh, John, welcome back! Welcome back! Uh... So two straight edges. Let's go all cams because we don't know what we'd be doing here. All right. And oh, Susie was away for a week and I've lost all me. Doby! Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> it is. The whole gang's here. Um, yeah, Susie's away for a week and I wasn't eating, so my belt's too loose. Okay. Now... Obviously, you don't need... I don't know if it's going to work anyway. There you go. You don't need a staple gun, and they all do. It's just I have... Like that? I'll, I'll do it again for an uncle. Um, I've got a staple gun here. So, what you do... If you're going to make a permanent one, it wouldn't hurt 
to put a dab of glue on it. So we've got any glue here. Oh, here we go. Just a, a splodge of glue on two bits. Put one bit down. Here we go. Get whatever size material you're using and put it next to the one you've just glued down. Move the other one up next to it. And nail that. I'll just, ho I'll just hope I've left enough space there. Um, and then get a 45, whatever angle you, that you need. In this case, it'll be 45 degrees. 45 degrees, mark it. Or if you want to get real technical, we'll, we'll do it with a knife. Okay, so I'm not using anything super, super tricky. This is just rubbish out lying around the floor. Get a chisel. As I normally do when you're doing a saw cut, on the waist side of the saw cut, run your chisel up and that'll give you a reference mark. We'll do this properly, so I'll clamp it, clamp it to the bench. Grab a saw, cut along that 45 degrees that you've just put in. Throw that bit away because we don't need it. And if you want, you can just whack another, well, that was, whack another uh, staple in there. Now, if you want to get your 45 degrees, it's just a question of putting your material in the slot. Oh, shall we turn this around so you can see it on the other camera? There you go. Bearing in mind, you, you would make this neater, not just rubbish like I've just picked up off the floor. That will sit in there in the slot quite nicely. And grab a chisel. And what you do is you just gradually, with a, a shearing action like that, work up onto your angle. And there's your perfect 45 degrees. And then you measure, where are we? Okay, we'll put, it's got a bit of stuff that's just got to come off there. Put that in there, mark close to where you think it should be. Make sure you're bigger than what you think you should be. You don't want to be smaller, you want to be a bit bigger. Make sure you get the right angle. That's why it would be good to have it on the other side as well. I'm just thinking. Okay, we should do another 45 or should we? No, that's all right. 
Okay, so cut wider than you want to start with. But you, I would cut rough cut that, that one with a saw, but this is thin stuff, so it doesn't really make much difference. Then creep up on it like we did before. And there you have mitered both ends. Got a bit more to cut off. We can cut that to length. I'm actually going to go back and use the plane, I think, only because it's quicker and I really want to get this done. But to do it so you didn't have those problems I was having then, if you do a 45 here and then a 45 on this side, then you just cut this one, switch it over, cut the other one, and away you go. But it's get, get into that time of the day where I just want to get this finished. Because I'm thinking hunger. So I will just go back to the shooting board. Because for me, it's quicker. That helps and it gives you a bit of an idea of what you can do and you don't need all the flash fancy tools that I've got but if you do have them appreciate them because they really are nice to use take off so I'll just knock it off quickly with this. I've got to um, I've got to go up to the dump and I've got to take the cage off of my trailer and um, 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 go and pick that pool table up, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I'll be with you all in a tick. I'll just It's gonna be quicker if I do it this way, isn't it? It is
What? Oh, gee. Oh, I can tell I'm starting to get flustered. Whoop. There we go. Nearly there. I reckon five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, three. Just got to take it easy, especially when you're coming to the end of it and you're just about over it. So looking forward to tidying this shed up. I cannot tell you how much. Okay, last one. I'll cut this and we are done. I'm not chatting at the moment. You ever done that? You work and all of a sudden you hit the, I think athletes call it, hit the wall. I've just hit the wall. <laughs> but it's all right. I've got you people there to keep me going. And if you're new to the channel and you like it, please subscribe. I would appreciate that. Done ski. Done. Oh, bonus. And I know I've got those other three to, to do, which I shall do those later on. But finished. Oh, I'll show you. This is, this is how you make um, the uh, holes. This is... Uh, let's go that one. Okay. This is sticky felt. And all I do, this is called a wad punch. It's got a hole in it with a flute. And all you do is grab a hammer and... Uh, this might not be working because I'm not on a 
solid surface. Hang on. There you go. And all these little dots come out. They end up filling up in this flute here. And uh, then you peel the sticky stuff off, put it on the bottom of your boxes, and you got some felt glides. Was there anything else I said I was going to do that I forgot I was going to do that I didn't? Oh, let me catch up on the chat. Mm. Good day, angry. How are you, Darren? Good to have you in, mate. It is. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, I heard from Prunella earlier in the week, Earl. Um, I don't know, I might do an afternoon stream one of these days. She generally comes on then. So I will send you all her best wishes anyway. Yeah, we miss Her Royal Highness. She, she's the one that rules supreme. Uh, yes, yeah, an Elgato stream deck. They are brilliant. And despite what you see on the internet about, oh, you can only have so many folders, you can have folders within folders within folders. I've got so many things happening on that. It is incredible. So excellent piece of kit. I think I've just changed it over to um, something else, but for my money, the, the Stream Deck are fantastic. And I also use the uh, gaming card. So what you're actually going through is the video camera. I think the delay is about might be a tenth of a second, but you can alter that in your settings. Mm. Oh, Andy, 4 a.m., time for bed, mate. What I miss, I don't know. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. I've had the air con on all morning, Trev. <laughs> oh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Matthew. I appreciate that. All right, well, that's it. I'm caught up. Thank you, everyone. My back is about to expire. My tummy muscles are telling me go have a rest. But I'm really, really happy with what I got done today. So I will have those finished and ready to go out the door tomorrow, which is awesome. Now I've got to go and load a 30 grade big slate pool table onto a trailer. But anyway, it's all good. Thank you, everyone. As I've said before, if you like me and you're new, please hit the subscribe button. I don't think I'll be streaming tomorrow. I might do one in the evening. I don't know. No promises. But uh, I've got a few other videos to put up and some of the, what I think, are the good parts in the stream I take out and put up as little videos as well. But thank you one and all for getting me through that horrendous job of doing 12 identical boxes and getting them finished because if I was down there, it was just me and Bob. Although I must admit before I started streaming, I had Bon Jovi belting out um, on maximum through a very powerful amplifier I've got down here. And it was working, but I love having a chat and I love the interaction with everyone in the room because you're a real cool group. And I'm so thankful to have you on my channel, which I appreciate. So that's it. This is Steve. I <laughs> haven't even got the energy to pull the shed door down. But I'm going to try. So pulling the shed door down and saying, Thanks, everyone, but remember to keep it sharp. More importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. I can take those off now, I can see. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. If there's anything you want to know woodworking-wise, you've got any queries about what I do, please send me a message on YouTube or you can email me at admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au and I look forward to catching up with you all again soon. In the meantime, be safe, God bless and enjoy whatever it is you're doing. Bye for now. <laughs>